it, it, was a, it was a terrifying childhood. My mother was mentally ill from the time that she was about 19. She really just got progressively worse as time went on. Her craziness, you know, of course, went untreated and undiagnosed. She was very abusive, verbally abusive and physically abusive. She would lock me in a closet. It was a closet under the stairway in this um, farmhouse. But there was light under the bottom of the door. So that's the light I had, which wasn't much. Created me a lot of loneliness, anxiety, depression, sadness. I never knew quite why I was put there. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I did this and I'm going to the closet. It was never like that. I was just put in the closet when my dad wasn't there. Between three and five, I was in that closet whenever my dad was gone. I went to school without any preparation. I was put on a bus, sent 30 miles away to the school. I was terrified of the kids. They were loud and they were scary. And so it was a terrifying time. I was afraid to go to school and I was afraid to come home. When I got into junior high, I had such pain inside of me all the time, all, always hurting, always fearful. And I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I couldn't stand the pain and I just wanted to end it. I didn't want to wake up with the pain anymore. I had a, a suicide attempt at 14. My mother was, she had uh, sleeping pills and, and she had things like that. And I thought I was taking that, but she had filled them with other pills. And God only knows what all I took. Ended up not dying, of course, but making myself really sick. Once I was in high school, it seemed like I was able to deal with the insecurities better. I still had that depression all the time. I always had to work through the depression every morning. Get up, try to get on top of my life so I could get to school and function always had that, that sadness, that depression, that fear, that anxiety, you know, that was always there, but I was better at covering it by that time. So I just started auditioning and, you know, this is without really any training at all. I mean, I'm just by the seat of my pants going, you know, to these things and, and getting um, the job. I loved to sing and loved to dance and, and loved to act, you know, loved it. And, but I knew, I was just afraid that they're gonna find out, you know, uh, that there was nothing behind this facade, you know? I was empty, just empty. As my mother proclaimed to be a Christian at one point, I didn't want anything to do with Christians, no, nothing. Got into uh, drugs and alcohol and, and um, occult practices and Eastern religions. These are things that were going around. And there was a girlfriend who worked with me in a lot of the TV shows, her name was Terry. And um, she was a Christian, but I did notice something, notice something different about her. You know, something really great. I didn't know what it was, but I, and I saw her family, and I saw some of her friends, and I thought, wow, there's just a great quality to them that I really like, but don't talk to me about this Christian thing. I kept sinking down and sinking down, and um, I was on a recording session with Terry. I'm planning my suicide again. I was going to plan this time I'm gonna make it work. I am going to get the right pills and I am going to go to sleep and never wake up again because I can't stand the pain. I'm not gonna live with the pain anymore. She said to me, she says, I can see you're not doing very well. She says, why don't you come with me to meet my pastor? I said, okay, okay, I'll go meet your pastor. I thought, well, at least I can do this for her, you know, before I put myself to death. He started talking to me about Jesus, not the way my mother talked about Jesus, but you know, in a new way, and that he would change me from the inside out. I thought, wow, that, that sounded so great. I mean, pretty, pretty far-fetched, you know, but worth a try. I mean, I tried everything else. So he said, I've got three books I want to give you. And you go home and read them this week, and then come back, let's meet, and you tell me what you think of those books. One of those books was the Gospel of John. I went home and read these books. Something in me changed. I knew I had read the truth. So I went back and met with him and um, received the Lord there. And I could feel a sense of hope, and that was the biggest thing. That sense of hope, wow. Never forget that. I, I, I never had that before. But I still had the depression. Now here I am, I have a, an eternal future that is good. I have life with the Lord. I have life with Him here now. So I'm thinking, why am I so depressed? And the depression's got worse. I called the church and they um, put me with this um, pastor's wife, her name was Mary Ann. I told her everything. She said, I want you to fast and pray for three days. 
in, in the meantime, I want you to write down every sin that comes to mind. I did that fast and prayed. I was afraid I was going to die in the night without dinner, you know, because I'd gone to bed hungry too many times in my life. And so that was scary as can be. But I did it because I wanted what God had. I was willing to do whatever it took to get rid of those feelings. I came back to the office uh, to meet her in her office, and, and she just had me lift that, lift that list up to the Lord and just, you know, ask for forgiveness for it, you know. And um, then she had me confess my unforgiveness toward my mother, which I had. And then I had to confess and renounce my occult practices, which I had never done. When I did those three things, the Lord really spoke to me through that counselor saying, my daughter, you've been locked in a closet all your life, uh, first physically and then emotionally, but I have the keys. And you can walk through that door and be free. When they prayed, I could feel that depression lift. It's not something I conjured up in my mind because I had no idea that that could happen. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to feel a little good, you know, like, you know, you know, just feel better. That's what I was expecting. I was not expecting to be set free from it completely. That was a miracle to me. That changed my life. Being a Christian or a believer doesn't mean you don't go through things but He is there with you. And that is such an important thing because we all go through stuff. No matter how dark that time is, you have a light in you that will not go out. Never forget that, never ever forget that.